The Wood Brothers have been in NASCAR since the very beginning, and at this point are one of the sport's most famous families. Leonard, Eddie, and Glenn built the team from the ground up, and as they say, the rest is history. As of this upload, they've won a total of 99 cup races, fielding cars for some of the greatest drivers in the sport's history. 26 drivers have driven for the famous Wood Brothers up to this point, with one of them being family. In the early 2000s, John Wood was was viewed as one of NASCAR's brightest prospects. From the very beginning, he was destined to be a NASCAR driver, as he is the grandson of the late Glenn Wood. In the early 90s, when Dale Jarrett was driving for the team, he gifted John his first go-kart. Eventually, he moved up to stock cars, proving his worth in the late model ranks, and in 2000, at the age of 18, he drove in the Hooters Pro Cup Series. In 20 races, he scored 4 top 5s and 11 top 10s as well as nearly winning a couple of races. 2001 would mark the beginning of John's NASCAR career. Over the next four seasons, he drove in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series for Roush Racing, competing full-time in three of them. His first two seasons resulted in no wins, but slowly but surely, he was building momentum. It finally all came together for him in 2003, which would turn out to be his best season in the series. After scoring a combined two top 5s and 14 top 10s in his first two years, he put together a top 5 point season, scoring two victories along with 10 top 5s and 20 top 10s. These victories took place at Kansas, and for historic reasons, Martinsville was the biggest. Not only did he hold off future Cup Series star Carl Edwards, but also his famous racing family's roots are in the state of Virginia. He only raced in two Bush Series races during this time, in his debut at IRP for Jack Roush, he started 6 and ended up finishing 6 an impressive debut indeed. But in the season finale at Homestead in 2003, he ended up taking out a championship contender, making contact with Scott Riggs early on in the race, ending his championship hopes. Despite that mistake, up to this point, John Wood was showing potential. Instead of rushing him up immediately, he was willing to take his time. With his family and backing, he could have easily fast-tracked to Bush and Cup. But unfortunately, his full-time driving career never got much better after that. In 2004, his final year in the truck series, it would be his most disappointing. Not only finishing 15th in the standings, but having his average finish dip from 8th to 17th. But during that season, plans were already in motion for him to move up full-time in the Bush Series for 2005. Over the next three seasons, he drove for ST Motorsports, which later merged with the Wood Brothers to form Wood Brothers JTG in 2006. And quickly, fans found out that 2004 wasn't just a one-off. Cars get a little loose, start bouncing off each other. John Wood in the 47. Curtis now, Davis. That's pretty much at pit road entrance. The less green flags that laps he's got to put on his too, the better off he'd be. But I see that 58 car just got pretty bad loose getting down into one and hopped up into the side of the 47 John Wood. how Jordan got uh, it more than likely a couple one two things happened he slowed down and somebody nailed him from behind and seen him spinning or he just locked the brakes down and spun it out I think we can see what happened remember see LaJoy coming in the corner on the inside of oh, he just loses control and up the racetrack he goes right in front of John Ooh. Wood that is a hard hit it was. But these guys have done a good job avoiding traffic. John Wood is in it in that 47 car. Caution number two at Bristol after 36 laps. Kyle Busch leads Martin Truex. Oh, my goodness. Looks like the left rear tire is blown on the 47 car and caused him to spin and back around the fence. And heavy, heavy damage to this. That's already in progress, but... Just looking at the tire and all the damage, my guess is the tire is what caused the spin. And I believe John Wood. Yeah. Oh, Stemmy was just in the wrong place. All the way down into the 47. Thought I had to slow down. He ended up hitting me. To the outside. Oh, he heard. 
Heard John get off the gas. I'm not sure why. Still there. Still there. Up against the wall here in front of you. Man, man, like a bomb goes off. John Wood was slowing down to miss it, and Paul Menard got into the back of him. Watch way down here inside the corner, and you will see what happens to John Wood as he tries to stay off Kurt Busch, passing him on the outside. And the Clorox car ends up that gum in just, the fence. He just starts wobbling off the corner there, coming down a straightaway, and spins out. Well, you see the 35 car down on the bottom just leaning all over the 47 car of John Wood. So this was Regan Smith is gonna. This was a camera number, is what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Boys, I want you to look at this. Oh, trouble on the racetrack, Tim. As we jump in here, the 47 car of John Wood. It's just uh, it's a classic case of getting arrow loose again. We've talked about it time after time. Coming out of turn four. Whoa. We gotta see that one more time, Jerry. It looks like the car just hung a dead right, like a suspension failure or something like that. I didn't know what to say there. I've never seen one do that. I don't never see, look. The car just hangs a dead right. That's that's that is very strange. That's like almost a steering wheel came off or something. It didn't seem to be a joke. Obviously, you were taking a lot of heat for that. Um, you know, the the the, the Clorox fusion was great all day. We ran top ten. We had a. A mediocre pit stop, which put us back there in, in a vulnerable spot to be in an accident. And um, sure enough, it happened. And there was absolutely nowhere to go. There was cars everywhere. And just got hit. Well, trouble. The one car, J.J. Yaley, and right in the side is the 47 of John Wood, who had nowhere to go. There's the 47 of John Wood, the window net. His car trying to move away. Biffle at 190 plus miles an hour with that Ford. Fusion comes across and just catches the right rear fender of John Wood. Oh, John Wood just can't catch it. John Wood was one of those cars laying back with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Bobby Labonte and those guys. He'd been back in that other pack and it looked like he had just kind of started making his move to the front and then uh, gets caught up in somebody else's wreck. In those three seasons combined, he would put together just three top fives and 11 top tens, finishing every season with his average finish outside the top 20. Safe to say his days of racing full-time were finished, but he's still impressed in some of his part-time runs, nearly winning a couple of races in the truck series. As for the cup series, he did eventually make a few starts for the Wood Brothers. His average finish in those starts was 33rd, and after 2008, he would never race in NASCAR again. By age 27, his driving career was over. After retiring from racing, he now serves as the Senior Vice President for Wood Brothers Racing. He actively participates in the day-to-day -day operations of the company's merchandising and business development. While his driving career didn't pan out, it's still great to see him involved in the family business. Eventually, I think he'll run the whole team someday. Only time will tell. But as of now, based on his Twitter bio, it's safe to say John Wood likes poking fun at being considered a NASCAR bust. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.